If you've been following along with me in the past couple of videos, you should have Sibelius's Quick Start menu open to the Setup window of the New Score tab. All we've got to do now in order to have an open Sibelius file is to hit Create, but let's confirm all of our menu values first. The document setup should be set to a page size of A4 or letter, portrait orientation, and house style unchanged. 6 8 should be selected in the time signature setup, with a pickup or upbeat of an eighth note, and a tempo of adagio. The metronome mark box should be checked, with a dotted quarter note equaling 72. The key signature should be set to E minor, and the score information should read green sleeves as the title, traditional as composer, and anonymous as lyricist. Add some other text here too in copyright and other information just to see how that works. Is it all ready to roll? Great! Then hit the Create button at the bottom right. Ta-da! Now we've got an open file to work with, which is a sheet of blank staff paper with 80 bars on it. I'm going to take a second here to reposition the file window to match my screen view. There we go. Also this essential doodad which I'll show you how to use in a couple more videos. For now though, let's take a quick look at this top menu bar called the ribbon. Here's where nearly every important function of Sibelius is laid out for the user with links to more flexible menus. To see them all, you can click on each of the 11 tabs or just scroll along like this if you have a more recent touchpad or mouse. Now let's scroll back or click back to the Home tab here on the left. If you rest your mouse pointer on each ribbon item, you get a thumbnail description of each function. Even more importantly, you get a keyboard shortcut. As you can see with these first items, the Cut, Copy, and Paste keyboard shortcuts are pretty much the same as for any Mac or Windows program. While this Home tab seems a bit miscellaneous at first, after a while you'll see that here's where you can shape the length of your score, decide on instrumentation, and do some very complex filtering and editing of certain objects. If your way of working uses the ribbon a lot, then you'll find yourself coming back here many times. The next tab is Note Input, and this is very focused in terms of operations. Here you can set input devices, control the way your notes are input, record MIDI input, swap voices, cross staves, and transform your notation in several ingenious ways. The Notations tab takes this even further with every other type of musical object, clefs, key and time signatures, bar lines, slurs, hairpins, ottava marks, and many other lines, symbols, weird note heads for contemporary scores, beams, brackets, and even graphics you can import yourself. With those first three ribbon tabs, not counting the file menu, you've got most of your necessary functions needed to notate music in Sibelius. When you're wearing your composer hat, here's where you'll be doing most of the work. Most of the remaining tabs cover categories that are more the concern of publishers, copyists, and music engravers like text, layout, appearance, and extracting individual instrument parts. However, today's working composer has got to wear those hats too, and Sibelius makes it all pretty easy to learn and operate these functions. A couple of videos ago, we found out how to open the Sibelius Reference Guide from the Quick Start menu. You can also open that here if you need any help, or see if you can find it by using the Find in Ribbon search engine. So, for instance, if you wanted to know where the command for a special page break was, you could look it up here. And then if you click on the search item, it will take you to that ribbon tab and highlight the menu option. I have to admit, as easy as this ribbon menu makes things for the entry-level user, I found myself operating almost solely using a combination of two other things. The first is keyboard shortcuts. As you can see, the majority of these ribbon functions, even most of the menu panels, can be opened with keyboard shortcuts. In this tutorial, I'll focus on every keyboard shortcut that helps speed things along so that you can be as efficient as possible in your workflow. After a while, you'll find yourself ignoring the ribbon panel more and more and focusing almost entirely on key commands. The other way I avoid using the ribbon is with the panels. We'll learn all about this assortment of indispensable little gadgets in video number 5. 